Now, of course, a huge part of being able to predict the weather is knowing what season it is. But what is a season? I think it's a word that we kind of take for granted and maybe don't really know the exact definition of. So when I think of a season, I think of a very specific time of the year that experiences very specific climate conditions. And what's special about this is that those uh, basically exact climate conditions are cyclic, which means they repeat possibly the next year or the year after. And so when we think of our seasons that we're used to, we have four. We have summer, winter, spring and autumn. And these kind of describe what climate conditions you could expect uh, for that time of the year. Now, this is what's happening here. This is what we experience and what we know. But of course, we know climates change. Climates are different and particularly depending on where you are positioned on the Earth. So let's take a little bit closer look at this. Now, unsurprisingly, the four seasons, uh, they are based on astronomical convention uh, and they really have to do with where the sun is and where the earth is with respect to the sun. Now here we can see uh, the earth's orbit around the sun. We know this takes about 365 days, exactly one year. Uh, and throughout this orbit, the earth is in a different position with respect to the sun. Now, because of this, the Earth, depending on what side of the Earth you're on, uh, you're going to be experiencing uh, more or less exposure to the sun. Now, we call this concept insulation. The more sunlight, the more sun rays that the Earth is capturing, uh, the more insulation you're experiencing. And that in turn affects the temperature that we experience here. Now, when we do uh, consider this orbit, the orbit of the Earth around the Sun, we might notice something here. We might notice that the Earth has a slight tilt to it with respect to the plane in which the Sun and all of the uh, bodies, actually, all of the planets are positioned in uh, the ecliptic. Now, the Earth actually, instead of pointing directly north, it has this slight tilt to it of about 23 degrees. Now, 23 degrees might not seem like that big of a deal, but it's actually the reason why we even experience seasons at all. Yeah, so what if there was no tilt, uh, as in this case here? Well, as we can see, the amount of sun that we're seeing in the northern hemisphere as, is about the same as the amount of sun that you're seeing in the southern hemisphere. So in that case, both hemispheres would be experiencing the same amount of insulation and therefore wouldn't be in summer or winter. Um, and you're in that sort of in-between point. So we do have one of these in our normal cycle. That's what we call the equinox. It happens in autumn and spring. And so you would get that sort of weather all year round in this case. But of course, that's not the case. So what we actually have is this 23 degree tilt uh, as pictured here. Um, and as the Earth sort of orbits the Sun, we're now getting a different amount of sunlight captured in the Northern Hemisphere or the Southern Hemisphere, depending on where we are in that orbit around the Sun. And so in this example that we've got here, we can see we're getting more sunlight in the Southern Hemisphere and less sunlight in the Northern Hemisphere. So what we've got pictured here is summer in the Southern Hemisphere and winter in the Northern And so then, Following on from this, then as we're moving in an orbit around the sun, different hemispheres change which are getting more sunlight and which are getting less sunlight. Um, and that means that each hemisphere will experience something different throughout the year. So that's where we get those different seasons from. Um, it also means that each hemisphere experiences a different length of their day. Mm -hmm. So for instance, in the example where we've got summer in the southern hemisphere, we're seeing daylight longer. And so you'll have days that can get up to 14 hours long when we reach that um, solstice, the summer solstice. Um, and conversely, it'll be shorter at that time in the northern hemisphere, so they might only have 10 or 11 hour days um, there. And in the extreme cases where we see the sort of the North Pole and the South Pole, 
um, at the peak, so at, the, at that point of the summer solstice, they actually have complete daylight in their summer and complete night time in their winters. Wow.